This is Whiskey 5 Mike Alpha Echo, Travis County Aries, Austin, Texas, y'all. In this video, we'll install a solder male in type connector onto LMR 400 Ultraflex. The male in type connector comes in two parts a body and a barrel. We'll begin the installation by using coax cutters to make a clean, square, round cut in our coax. On this installation I'll be using a razor blade uh, to do the prep. I've installed about a hundred or more connectors using a razor blade and not yet cut myself, but if you're averse to sharp objects you can use a cable prep tool similar to this one from DX Engineering or this type. We'll begin the prep by uh, using the connector as a reference. We will identify where to make our first cut. If you look at the connector you'll notice that the center pin has a thickened portion and a thin portion and we'll want the center conductor of our coax to come to the end of the thickened portion. Um, and so we'll begin our first cut about right here. In this cut we'll be going through the outer jacket and through the shield braid and down into the center dielectric. However, we want to avoid nicking the center conductor. RF travels along or propagates along the skin of the conductor and nicking the outer skin of the conductor will adversely affect the performance of the resulting connector. We'll start by making a shallow cut in the jacket and then progressively deepen that cut through the braid, shield braid, and down into the center dielectric by feel. We'll remove the uh, the jacket which is a PVC type material and the shield braid which is nice and tightly woven in LMR 400 and LMR 400 also includes a foil uh, sh an additional foil shield over the dielectric and we'll remove that in the dielectric by putting our thumbnail into the cut and giving it a sharp clockwise twist with respect to the cut end of the connector or the uh, coax and then we can continue to rotate and pull to remove the dielectric from the center conductor. This is foamed polyethylene which has a relatively low melting point. Again using the connector as a reference we'll locate our second cut which uh, should be about right here and we're going to just remove the jacket in this cut to um, expose the shield braid. And here I'm making a very shallow cut in the jacket, not even all the way through, a scoring cut really. And then a transverse cut along the, along the jacket with the going a little deeper toward the end. This can be used, this transverse cut can be used to remove long sections of jacket which would otherwise be difficult to pull off. And then we'll peel back from the transverse cut to remove the jacket. The next step is to use braid trimmers to trim back the, the braid away from the dielectric. Uh, we do this to avoid a common fault in connector assembly where the shield braid comes unbraided and um, some of the conductors get into the dielectric area and, and may cause a fault during assembly, a short, or may even cause one at a later date. Trimming back the shield braid helps avoid that. We we'll want to trim any, any stray wires, uh, conductors, make sure that the dielectric area is free of any conductive material. The next step uh, we'll uh, tack, solder tack the braid and we'll um, wet our soldering iron 
to prepare it for soldering and clean it. Oxides develop on a hot soldering iron and if those get into the working joint uh, it will prevent the solder from sticking. So we will um, we'll tack that braid down simply by holding the, the uh, solder perpendicularly across the braid and touching it briefly with the soldering iron want to apply a minimum amount of heat for a minimum amount of time in doing this. If you happen to get a high spot then you can just swipe along the coax to, uh, to flatten that spot out. You don't want to apply much uh, much solder at all, just enough to adhere to um, that shield braid all the way around. This step is recommended if you're going to be running much power through the connector, uh, but it also can help um, the connector re re retain its structural strength throughout its lifetime. The next step in the process is to um, sleeve on uh, optional heat shrink tubing. This is half inch quarter wall heat shrink tubing. And then we'll be threading on our connector body. We'll need to thread the, the center conductor through that small hole in, in the body by feel. And we don't want to apply any force in this process because uh, if we catch one of these wires and apply any force to it, it will uh, get um, unraveled from the stranded center conductor and get pushed back into the, uh, into the connector as we thread the body on, creating another common fault. So we'll just uh, maneuver this until we get the center conductor into that small gap in the pin. And then I'm going to use this uh, handy tool from DX Engineering to thread the connector onto the remainder, thread it the remainder of the way onto the coax. This area of the connector body is threaded and bites into the coax as the, as the connector is threaded onto the coax. And this can be awkward to do uh, by hand or with a pair of pliers. And we'll just thread that on until it meets some resistance. And then using pliers we'll remove the connect uh, tool. Looking at the connector, we can see some shield braid in this hole and braid in this hole. And we also see the center conductor in this small hole in the tip. At this point, it's a good time to continuity test the connector to make sure that we haven't introduced any shorts in the process. Uh, the connector is recoverable at this point, but once we begin soldering, uh, if you have to start over again, you'll require a new connector. 
and we're going to position the connector so that the um, center, the hole in the center pin is uh, up and we'll clean our soldering iron and stretch out a, a length of solder. Applying the soldering iron to the hole, we'll hold it here for about eight seconds to heat up the, the uh, center pin. We don't want to apply any more heat for any more, uh, any more time than necessary to avoid melting the uh, uh, center insulator holding the pin into the body. Uh, this Teflon will melt if the pin gets too hot. I'm going to slide that pin around and um, start to feed solder into the hole and as the pin gets hot enough it will wick that solder down into that hole. It is oftentimes the case that uh, within connectors in particular that solder, unwanted solder gets on the outside of the pin and that's no big deal. You can use some uh, super wick to place between your soldering iron and the unwanted solder and swipe the super quick over, super wick over the uh, unwanted solder to remove it from the connector. We'll continuity test this again to make sure that our soldering process did not introduce a short. And then we'll proceed to solder the two holes. Cleaning our soldering iron after each operation. We're going to hold the soldering iron across the hole, not down into the hole. Uh, the objective here is to heat the body of the connector, not the, not the coax beneath it. Recall that the center dielectric material is uh, has a low melting temperature and if you hold heat or apply too much heat to this connector you'll melt that material and damage the uh, damage the connector and have to start over again. So here we're going to hold it across the hole for about um, 8 to 10 seconds. And I'm going to back up a little bit and then we'll feed a sufficient quantity of solder into the hole to fill the hole and give the soldering iron a little swipe to make sure the hole is closed. Completely filled with solder. You don't want to apply too much solder in this process. You certainly don't want the solder to run along the outside of the connector body because if that happens and that gets too close to uh, an unsoldered hole then you won't be able to solder that other hole because the um, uh, the solder that you add to try to fill the next hole will just glom onto the solder that's already there on the body. Um, soldering these holes does a couple of things for you. Uh, one, it assures good electrical conductivity between the shield braid and the connector. And then it also helps weatherize the connector, reduce the effects of weather uh, and oxidation on the performance of the connector. And also it adds some structural strength to the connector by trapping the shield braid in the uh, solder, you're preventing the coax from untwisting from the um, from the scent, from the body of the connector. Another way to do this is to uh, hold your soldering iron across the hole. We'll let that heat up for eight to ten seconds. Again, it's not, not down in the hole. This is a quarter inch chisel tip, so it's spanning the, the entire hole and not going down inside. And then we'll feed a sufficient quantity of solder in the hole to fill it and give our soldering iron a little swipe. <clears throat> Thank you.
we'll continuity test this connector again to make sure that there's uh, there are no shorts. The next step is to uh, slide your heat shrink tubing onto the connector. Uh, the connector is still a bit hot, so we'll tend to shrink for that body immediately. And we'll use a heat shrink gun or a air, hot air gun to finish heat shrinking that tubing. If you look inside the barrel, you'll notice that there's an O-ring seal in the barrel that helps to weatherize uh, this connector. Um, you want to wait until the body cools off sufficiently so that it doesn't damage that O-ring. And then you thread the, the barrel onto the body and tighten the assembly with pliers. And that's a solder type, a male end type connector on LMR 400 Ultraflex.